So, we kind of messed around with Chewy here just a little bit. We got the saddle and bridle on him again, and we're going to start getting him prepared for ground driving. And what we don't want is for him to panic if he feels a rope around his behind. So when you start this, you want to maintain a 45 degree angle from his hip here. And get him to start tipping his nose to the outside there. And you just keep adding a little bit of pressure until he surrenders his hip. So we'll kind of do that again. Because I got to talk and I got a little bit out of position. When you start this with a colt or a horse, you make sure you fall back here at a 45. And if he moves, you move with him. If he moved away, you have to move. What you don't want to do is find yourself here and the horse kind of getting in a bind and sucking. him. What you want him to do is just slightly and quietly follow his nose out. And this is the very first time we've ever done it with him. But I want him to feel the rope. Don't get yourself kicked. Stay above the hocks. Try to maintain this 45 degree angle here. Tip. Maybe encourage some motion. And that's what we're looking for right there. Then we just bring him back. Reset the rope. Don't get yourself kicked. Find yourself at a 45. Get him to follow the lead rope, not follow you. There we go. And then just let him unwind himself there. And with that, he's about ready for ground driving because we've already taken the time to teach him to be soft in his face and to follow. So let's go ground diving. So when you're teaching a young horse to stand and tie, this is what I kind of like to do. I'll tend to take two or three wraps so he can feel some resistance but also get some pull. So if he starts to pull back, he doesn't feel caught and panicked. And if it's too loose, just throw another wrap over the rail there. And that'll just add a little bit more resistance. Now he can still pull that if he threw his weight back into it. So. Just let them stand there on that, and then if they go to panic, you know, they're not caught, pulled back, thrashing their neck, jumping forward. Now when I go to start ground driving, I tie the stirrups together underneath with a piece of rope or twine. And then I use kind of a big ring here so it has weight. And I come through, and I'll hook it to the halter and the bit so he can kind of feel I'm pulling on his halter and the bit at the same time but I don't go just straight to the bit but I'll do that on both sides and then uh, we'll go to ground driving him here. The stirrup and he's never had this on before and I'll hook the boat so now see he can kind of feel the halter pulling at the same time or just an instant before he feels the bit grabbing. So here's where it gets a little spooky. The first time you go to send them off, you just make sure you have all your ropes untangled. Personally, I use old cap ropes, and there's a reason. Because they're a little bit stiff. They're not, I can kind of whip them around easily. And when I go to release a pull, I can actually kind of push the slack forward. So we're just kind of let him get used to it, the weight and the pull of the rope. So I'm going to let this get behind me here a little bit, follow him along. When he gets back in front of the camera there, I'll just kind of pick up my right rein to let it rest against his hocks. I try to maintain this 45 degrees. And if I wanted some motion, I kind of I kind of drive him with this left rein now. There. 
Now I let the left rein go against his hock. I'll let him travel a little bit. When he comes back to the camera, I'll just kind of pick up and set the left rein and then kind of bump him with the right. There. He didn't see it. Sorry about that. Just got the right rein. I'm not pulling on it. I want to feel that there's tension on it. There. These turnbacks will get smoother and smoother and less and less resistant. Drive him across. Drive him off with the right rein. Check the left rein. But there. Nice turnback. Go ahead and set the right rein. Drive him with the left. There. Drive him off. Pick up and set the left ring. Drive with the right. Nice. Let him think here. If he wants to walk, that's fine. If we start to incorporate a little verbal cue, come ask him to turn. I'm just going to say, Good. He'll travel along. If I want to turn, give him a little verbal cue. Set the left rein, drive with the right. If I want him to turn, move, set the rein, turn, not. Let him travel. And each time I ask him to turn, I say, move, set, move. And drive. Now he hears the verbal and he starts thinking, time to turn. Move, set, look at here. Nice. Move, set the left. There. Let him travel a little bit here. Say move, set the right, look at here. Set the right, move. Let him travel. Say move. Set the left. Look at here. Nothing extra. So now pretty soon, we'll start even doing this. Pretty soon, I'll just say move. You just start to drive him off. There. Drive with the left. There. Oops, you got it there. Turn on. Right there. I never pulled my right. Ooh. Let him really think that what he just did there that was good. Stop him. Ooh. Left and right. And right and left. Until he takes a step back. Ooh. Until he takes a step back. I'm going to stay between the reins. Ooh. There. Step back. Him up, barely make contact, nice. Move, make contact, nice. Move, there. Let him really think on that. So, this whole time we've never gone hard to the bit or hard to his mouth. Move. He's felt the majority of the contact on the halter. Always make your sessions short and meaningful. Don't over drill. Don't sour your horse. Don't make him hate working for you. Let him enjoy it. Let him know that he's done something good. And that he gets rewarded for it. So we'll come back and ground drive him tomorrow and start all over. And because he's only had a bridle on a few times. We always want to make sure when we ask him to take the bridle off his first few times and then forever, that we don't just take it off and drop it. I want him to 
come to its left, and then just a little bit of down pressure here. If I have to, I'll reach up here and suggest he lower his head a little bit. There. And I'll let him spit it out low and left. He'll start looking for it over here and knowing he gets to release it over here too. Good boy.